Hi, so if you've done any uh, RC stuff in the past couple of years, uh, no doubt you've seen these. These are USB powered multiple battery chargers. Uh, this one can charge up to four cells. And uh, you know, this one I'm using for my little Hubsun X4 drone. And uh, I've always kind of wondered how reliable these things are and uh, if they're safe to use with my batteries because I noticed that these these batteries only last you know a couple tens of flights and then they they kinda die and don't take a charge anymore so I'm wondering is it the uh, the toy that's that's draining the batteries incorrectly and over discharging them or is it the charger that's overcharging them uh, so I aim to find out so taking these apart is uh, pretty easy pull the uh, batteries out here and they just uh, there's not much holding them in uh, they don't even have screws they're just a friction fit so you just kinda pull these apart gently with your little screwdriver so here's a little circuit board so here's the four charge ports interesting that they've left the middle charge port off uh, left off its LED. Uh, kind of interesting. Uh, if we look at the back here, we see four identical circuits, uh, each with uh, one active chip. And it's interesting that there is uh, there are footprints on the board for the fifth channel, but they have not populated it. Uh, power comes in here, and that's pretty much it. Now I looked up these chips and uh, I'm going to take a page from W2AEW's videos. Um, go watch his videos if you're interested at all in uh, electronics. He does a fantastic job at explaining things, much better than I'm probably going to be able to do. But uh, anyway, uh, so I looked these up. They are LTC 4054s. Uh, they were marked as LTH7 and I just googled that and uh, this data sheet came up. And uh, what these are, they are lithium-ion uh, battery chargers. They're dedicated chips uh, just for the task of charging the battery. And uh, they have an adjustable current uh, up to 800 milliamps, and they have a preset 4.2 volt uh, charge cutoff, uh, which is exactly what you want for uh, lithium polymer batteries such as this. Uh, now the pinout uh, and the usage of this device is very simple. Uh, you've got ground, your battery connection, your uh, input voltage, so this would connect to USB, uh, an charge indicator, charge status output, that would be connected to just LED to give a visual indication of charging, and a program port uh, or pin. And there's a resistor that you attach from the program pin to ground and that sets the charge current. The charge current is defined in the data sheet as 1000 volts divided by the resistor. And uh, I kind of stared at this for a while and I followed the tracks and I found that the stock resistor uh, that's on this uh, board here is 2.2K and if you do the math that works out to 454 milliamps. Uh, so let's call it half an amp. Uh, so you've got four uh, circuits on here each drawing half an amp well that's uh, two amps so that's uh, quite a bit of power going into this little thing uh, I guess two and a half amps maybe was too much I don't know but uh, so at first glance uh, looks like they're using the correct chip correct cutoff voltage but unfortunately the current seems a little high so uh, I did look up the data sheet for these uh, batteries and the maximum charge current is actually uh, about 700 uh, milliamps so technically it falls uh, within range of uh, what this battery can take but uh, typically when when dealing with lithium polymer batteries like this you don't really want to exceed uh, so-called 1C uh, charge rate. Uh, C refers to basically the capacity as a current so this is 380 milliamp hours uh, 1C would be 380 milliamp 2C would be 380 milliamp times 2, so whatever that is, about 800 milliamps. Uh, yeah, and you don't really want to exceed 1C while charging. Discharge, this battery is rated to 25C, so 
that's uh, you know somewhere around five amps or something like that. Uh, and this is this is a little high, and it's especially bad when uh, shoot I forgot to grab it, but uh, some of my batteries are that I use with this charger are actually uh, quite a bit smaller than this. I think they're about uh, 300 milliamp hour capacity, and that would be uh, kind of pushing it to use 450 milliamps. So I've kind of decided that uh, I'm going to tip the favor uh, towards battery longevity versus, uh, excuse me, charging speed. Uh, and I'm going to actually swap out some of these resistors uh, to be somewhere around the neighborhood of 3 to 4K. Uh, that should give me a charge current of around uh, 300 milliamps. And uh, of course the batteries will take longer to charge, uh, but I will, I'm willing to take that uh, take that trade off because I've got uh, let's see six of these and that gives me quite a long time of uh, flight on my little quadcopter so uh, not really interested in uh, charging them while I'm flying or anything like that so all right so follow along as I uh, rework this now these look scary uh, because they're so tiny uh, they're I think they're 0603s but uh, they're really not. I'm not going to use hot air for this because there's, well, for one thing, many people don't have hot air rework stations. And uh, these connectors, they might not be made out of plastic that's designed to handle the high temperatures related to hot air. Because I think what this, how this board was assembled is that given the through hole parts here, uh, all the parts on the bottom were glued into place with a little glue dot. And then this entire thing was flow soldered, you know, in a wave soldering machine. Um, so these aren't really designed to have a lot of heat applied to them. They were just designed to be dipped really briefly. So, all right, let's head over to the soldering area and uh, see what we can do. Oh, and before we do that, just to uh, verify our math and our uh, reverse engineering, uh, let's actually try to measure the current, the charge current. So. I'm going to switch over to amps here. Uh, I know these batteries are not fully charged. I was just flying with them. So I'll plug that in, 430 milliamps or thereabouts. So it's within range. All right, so this is incredibly awkward behind the camera, but I've got the board here and I scrounged up uh, for 270, sorry, uh, 2.7K uh, resistors. Uh, they're not quite as high as I want to go. They will give me a charge current of just about 380 milliamps, uh, which is fine. Um, it's within uh, what I'm comfortable with. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace those. Uh, so first step is to uh, get rid of the old resistor. I'm just going to put a bit of flux on there. You never have too much. Uh, so I'm going to take my solder here. and I'm just going to get a nice little blob of fresh solder on both sides of the resistor that I'm trying to remove. The purpose of this is so that I can take my tip and hold it so that it contacts both blobs at once so that I can melt them both and lift up the part. Uh, if the blobs are kind of the normal um, normal size that you'd find on the board normally uh, that would be very difficult to do. So bit of a trick to this but you just kind of do that and sometimes the surface tension is enough to get it back into place but just grab it with your tweezers so that's one gone now I want to put the new one on there so I'm going to apply a little bit of fresh uh, flux and unfortunately these resistors are used I couldn't find anything uh, in my normal stock, so shouldn't matter. These are salvaged off of an old plasma TV. So usually when you're doing this kind of uh, soldering uh, on a fresh board you would do the kind of the attack and reflow approach where you'd kind of solder one side of the part uh, and then move on to the other side and then you'd be done. Uh, that's kind of awkward here because you've already got little balls of solder on the board and I could uh, get rid of those with some solder wick uh, 
but I'm just going to keep it simple and just flow it into place like this just pushing down on the part slightly um, with my iron and yeah that'll cause the part to be kind of kicked off at an angle but uh, quite honestly it doesn't matter not for this anyway so now I'm just going to flow a little bit of solder on the other side touch up this side oh there we go so you'll find that the heat conducts pretty well through, through these um, small parts so sometimes it'll melt both parts just or both contacts just by heating it up so I'm just exploiting that now to uh, reposition the part so again a little bit of solder or uh, flux adding some extra solder to the device there I'm gonna turn my temperature down it feels a little high Maybe that's why I'm having some trouble. Alright, so just lift that off. And grab the new part. And sorry I'm in the way, but let's see if I can... Maybe if I switch hands. See how that'll go. It's tricky enough as it is. Not doing it left-handed. I'm just gonna melt that into place. And that looks pretty, pretty tasty. So I'm gonna go on the right-hand side. Make sure that it's flowed in nice, and that's good. So I'm gonna repeat it two more times, and we should be good to go. I suppose I should test this now, but eh, I'm pretty confident. All right, 372 milliamps, excellent. Okay, so uh, here's another one, the five channel one. And uh, inside it's very, very similar to the other one here. The part here was marked 2KAX, um, and it looks to be pretty much a clone of um, this LTC 4054. It seems to have the same pinout as well. So just for fun, why don't we measure the current on this one and see what it's doing. 380 milliamps. So this one would have been fine to, uh, to use with these cells, but let's see if there's any marking on here. Yeah, there's no, there's no marking at all uh, on this one. All right, so one sort of final thing to note. Uh, if you're running one of these things off of a slightly marginal uh, supply like you know one of these connectors off the side of your PC case that has gone through you know a lot of wiring to get to where it is um, you're probably going to experience some voltage drop uh, problems so uh, here I'm charging three batteries at once and if I plug in a fourth you'll notice that this light turned on indicating that it's charging this cell here but this one turned off uh, and that's because uh, effectively the uh, supply voltage has dropped so much in the combination of all the wires and the motherboard and uh, this little tiny lead which is really inadequate for two amps um, has caused the voltage to drop enough that uh, the device charging this cell here has kind of decided to call it quits because the input voltage is too low while this cell uh, still gets charged because maybe its voltage is lower some weird interaction is happening so just my point is if you're using one of these things uh, make sure to use uh, a supply that is capable of, um, of supplying all the current that you need without grouping in voltage I was measuring this and in this state right here on the circuit board I'm getting about 4.25 volts um, which is just barely enough to uh, charge one of these cells at 4.2 volts. Uh, as soon as I added another cell, uh, I'm sure it drooped enough to uh, to cause problems. Now, technically speaking, uh, as the charge current drops across all the cells, the voltage droop will effectively disappear. So, um, if you give this thing enough time, all the batteries will charge up, and then everything will kind of work fine. But 
that's kind of a weird mode to be putting these charging chips in. Uh, barely adequate power supply all the way up to full charge. So I wouldn't really trust it to be, uh, to be happy and uh, keep your batteries from being unhappy. So anyway, use a proper high current power supply.